everyone. Lizzie Brewer here. Um, and today I'm going to show you how I do this tree of life. Um, I have a necklace that has a tree of life on it with got the little chakra stones and stuff. And it's so beautiful. It's made out of wire and wire wrapping. And it is so pretty. And this one here I wanted to try to um, do one with... Um, textile style, you know, with using um, threads. I used yarn. I used yarn and I used a four inch embroidery hoop for this particular one. I would, I intend to use, uh, once I find a larger hoop, I want to make a larger one too so I can get even more limbs and twigs going on on it. But for this one, I'm going to do it similar to that one right there. I don't I'll make them all exactly the same. They all kind of turn out different. And so what I first do is I put the... I um put the... What is my lace look raggedy right there? It looks quite raggedy right there. i got to start that over. I already started this whole video over once, so I'm just going to cut that raggedy part off of there. Okay, I don't know why it was raggedy. Okay, maybe a raccoon got into my my yarn and chewed on it. Not really, I don't have any raccoons in my yarn. Um, weird stuff comes out of my mouth sometimes. Okay, now, I'm going to just do a single crochet all the way around. Keep single crocheting. All the way around I just reach under through the center of the hoop grab the yarn and and single crochet all the way around and you can do this also with just wrapping you don't have to crochet this around um, you can just wrap your yarn around and around and and that will work too but um, I find that crocheting it, it leaves me a ridge up here with the single crochets. I have that ridge there. And that ridge is helpful when you go start adding the actual tree because you go under that ridge. And the ridge holds your branches where you want them to be. The ridge of the single crochets. And so... It doesn't take too long to get all the way around the um all the way around the hoop and I try to keep it tight so sometimes my I get space and so I I kind of just scoot it so that it's a bit tighter the um the crocheting is a little tighter on the on the wood so you don't actually see any of the wood when you um when you finish crocheting it around and so so i hope everybody is doing good i've been kind of concerned for a lot of you um because i I've, I've been watching some of the weather on the little weather channels on the YouTubes and I see so many tornadoes and all up around the Midwest and Kentucky and Arkansas, Mississippi, Oklahoma, all in around there, I think Missouri. And um, I didn't watch any today. Oh, I did earlier this morning, but then I didn't. Just, I don't know how it's going right now. But this weather, oh my word, it's been just, um, it's been terrible. I mean, I don't like to call weather terrible because weather is just Mother Nature, but it's just been terrible. And, and so I'm just hoping that everybody is safe, but I hear that there's like sirens and stuff that'll go on um, to warn you if there's a, if there's a tornado in your area soon and then you're supposed to go for shelter and hopefully most people in that area have basements that they can get into. I know here in Florida we don't have basements. 
I'm, there might be some, but we live in big old sand hill here in Florida, so we don't have basements in our homes here. But then we don't usually have tornadoes, or we, we have hurricanes. But, and hurricanes will bring tornadoes too sometimes, but um, we, we don't get them like in the Midwest. So anyhow, here I'm about halfway across. I was, um, I had told myself today is going to be a organizing day is to get things organized again in my room here because I'm telling you, I'm not very, I pick something off the shelf and I bring it over here to work on and then I use something and then I just kind of scoot it over and before long I've got a whole mountain of things and then I have to go around and put them all away not only on my table but even on my floor all the way around me I'll have different containers of of supplies and so I started the table so I did get space found myself some space on the table and um but it seems like once I see that big open space on my table, then I want to do something again. I've been spending, I call it too much time in my lazy chair, but I've got a silly feet want to swell if I don't keep them elevated a little bit more. So I've been doing that, and I actually watched movies on my Kindle. I just put my headphones on and then, Put a movie on my Kindle and watch a whole movie just so my um, feet are elevated, which I can do crafting, even sitting in my chair. I can make yo-yos. There's a few things. I can work on a crochet blanket I'm making. That's going slow. And um, there's a lot of things I could do even in my chair. But... This is what I'm doing, is I'm just doing this here, as you can see. So, i got a few things put away, though. So, I figure I've made some headway. But then I get this little space, and I get this little space, and I just have to fill it up with something. Look at there. I'm almost all the way around crocheting around the circle so it doesn't take long to do something like this. And, and once we get that done, I think I'm going to use this same, whoops, same yarn to even do the tree. I do believe that. I haven't done that yet, that I use the same same yarn that I go around with to make the tree. And so I'm just about ready to show you how I make the tree, and then I'm, I won't keep you long. Um, I need that little piece under there and that little end, get that end under there and crochet over that piece. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty well covered. And so then I'm just going to slip stitch that together. Mm. Yes, Elizabeth, just you can do it. You can do it. Why, why do the simplest things give me there we go. Now, now that piece, I can just snip that off because that's already under. And then when I, where did I put that 
thing. Oh, Lizzie. Oh, there it is. I know what I'll do is I'm just going to get a quick a yarn needle here. And um, I'll just get a yarn needle, a blunt-ended yarn needle. Hi, Papa. Okay then, sweetie. My hubster, you guys. You just... He's going to go take a walk to the road, but... Yeah. I'm telling on you. Yes, I am. Just telling them you're in the doghouse. You're in the doghouse? Yeah. Because of that face. Nice face. It is a nice face. You got a nice face. Yeah. It's going to stay this way. Okay. It's going to look even better when you get your fuzzo done. Oh, when I get your fuzzo done? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay, sweetie pie. I love you too. So. The hubster surprised me this morning. He went in to get cleaned up in the morning. You know, you go in the bathroom and you do whatever it is you do in there. And um, he shaved his whole beard off. I could not believe he did that. I mean, it's okay. He can do whatever he wants. It's his beard. But he's had that beard for so long and he just looks so different now. Looks so different without his little Santa Claus beard. Okay, there. I just hid that extra little piece of yarn there so I don't see the yarn. Okay, so now I'll show you what I do to actually make the tree. I've spent 12 minutes just doing this part here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take a length of yarn... I got probably three yards here. It's um, usually I have to. This will not be enough to do the whole tree, but I can't put too too much on on my needle. Or um, I end up with a big big fat knot. But I'm going to show you how I do this tree. And I don't know if somebody else does these same things. I haven't even researched it. I haven't Googled it. But there probably might be others that do make the Tree of Life. Because the Tree of Life is very, a very common thing. Okay, I'm going to tie a knot in the end of this. But uh, then I'm going to end up cutting this end off. But I tie the knot so that I can go in. I tie the knot so that I can just slip my needle anywhere on the ring underneath and go under. I go under like um, five or six stitches there. And I go under there and then that knot is going to keep me from pulling that all the way through. And now that is where I start. That's where now I'm going to start my... Um, my my the the um trunk of the tree and then but then that's going to be in there tight there and I'll be able to cut that off later so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to go straight up I want to go as, as straight as I can and I'm just going to go straight up to the to the um up to the top and then I'll go this is what I meant but being by able to take my threads and then just go under that crocheted ridge there and then I go through the hoop and come back so that kind of crosses over and then I come back to the trunk of the tree and go through pull it through with your yarn needle And um, then I want to go now, and now I'll go back around 
through, I'll go back through, so it kind of crosses, you're, you're in the middle, and then I'm going to go over about a half an inch, or, you know, maybe even three quarters of an inch, I'm going to go over and back again under the ridge. And, and there that is, and then again I'll go bring it back through the, through the um, hoop so it now will, and then I will always bring this one now back down to the trunk of the tree and go right next door to it, right next to it, and put, put that through. And then, now I want to go back through on the other side, and I'm going to cut this off now. I can cut this knot off, because it kind of gives me something bothering my eye. There you go. Then through the hoop, and then I'm going to go back up over on this other side, and, um, and go under. and. And these don't have to be exact, your amounts, because these are the branches of the tree. And so this one's a little bit less than that one, but that's all okay there. And then we're going to go back to, I go to the other side of the, of the trunk. So all of these threads down here are down at that bottom of the loop. And then I'm going to go on this side again. This time we'll go a little bit more over there, half to three quarters of an inch away. And then we come back down to the bottom again. Then I go to the other side of the trunk. Whoopsie. So I want to go inside. Wait a minute. No, I just oh. come back through there. Come back down that same. Yeah. I come back down that same way. Just I'm kind of showing you what I do. If I don't make any sense, please excuse me. But you get, and this is something that you don't have to follow the directions exactly because whatever you come up with is going to be fine. It's, it's as long as you get the basic idea um, and then it's all still going to work the same. Okay, now we're going to go back up and come bring that through the middle. So all of these are like crossing over in the center. Then, But then if you don't have them crossing over, that's not any big deal either. It, it'll still be your tree. It's still all the trees will be different. They'll all turn out different when you, when you make them. I was thinking how it would be neat to make four of these and decorate, not make actually a tree of life out of them, but decorate them for the four seasons. I think that would be fun, too. Okay, now we'll put that down there. And so then I want to go and get another branch up here. On this side. And I think that'll be enough branches on that side. Ooh, I think I'm just, I hope I have enough yarn because I want to go one more over here on this side and then back down. Gosh. Just, I, if I had had two more inches on there, I'd have been real happy, but this is going to just be enough anyway. So I'm going to get that... Um, Run the end of that yarn right through. I just put that needle in through there so that that yarn. There we go. 
So now that will stay in there. It won't come out. Please don't come out, yarn. Okay. So I actually made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I did the center one and then I did three on either side. So then it looks like this. So that's what you have first. Then what I want to do, now I'm going to get more yarn. And thread that through my needle. Okay, I want to take the end of my yarn here now. And first, I'm going to tie the end of it. I'm going to take this end and I'm going to go to the bottom, to the bottom of the trunk of the tree. And I'm going to tie that all the way around the trunk of the tree. I'm going to just tie it on nice and tight. Okay, now, I'll cut this off too in a little while, but I'll leave it on for right now. But now what I start doing is, oh, you know what I usually do? And I didn't do it this time, but I can, I can fix that up anyway here. I can, oh, I'll just go ahead and tie this on to here. It won't hurt none to have that tied right around on there. That knot won't give me any trouble. I'm going to tie that in a square knot so that's on on there. And this is where you, I, I'm i just showing you what I do. You're certainly not trying to teach a right and a wrong, that's for sure. And um, there we go. So now I've, out, now I've actually got a double strand of thread. Okay, Papa. Now I've actually got a double strand of yarn, which I like to use a double strand because it actually just gets done quicker that way when you have a double strand. Okay, so now I'm going to start wrapping. But I'm, when I start wrapping the trunk, see, I'll go up so far with the trunk. This one, I've got the trunk. I've done the trunk, but I and only one branch that I've done so far. But what I do on the trunk now is I um, sort of do a figure eight as I'm wrapping it. So I um, so I'll go and go through to the back, and then come up somewhere in the center of that bunch of branches. So somewhere in the center I'll come up. And then I'll go back on the other side of the trunk. And then back up somewhere toward the center. But not exactly in the same thread. Go a thread over, you know. And so you're doing like a figure eight in there. But, um, and then when you come up in the center, come, come up somewhere in the center, but not in exactly the spot that you're, you just went through. And back, and you go back to the back. Now what did I do? I lost, <laughs> I've got only one thread here now. My, my knot. No, my knot is still there. What did I do, Elizabeth? Oh. Okay, what's that end there? Yeah, that was my knot. My knot came unknotted. Okay, I pulled on it too tight. So I'm not going to undo all of that. I'm just going to go back up here 
and I'm going to put that yarn in a knot again because my yarn came undone. And I'm not one who wants to just start all over from scratch. So I'll make this work and I'll make this happen and I'll make my knot where my knot is not going to show. So I'll just cover it up with yarn. But I just pulled that apart and I thought I had it in a nice square knot, but apparently not. Apparently not. My knot was not right. little straggly ends off of my knot. Hope my knot does not come apart again. Okay, now, now back to where we were. Back to where we were. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm losing my mind. Okay, now I'm going to come back through, I want to cover up my knot, I'm going to come back through the center somewhere and go around the one side, come back through the center somewhere and go down the other side. Come back through the center somewhere. other side keep alternating sides like I said like a like a figure eight and if you get the needle into the same section again it really doesn't matter because even though I said get it in a separate separation thing it doesn't really matter because and you really don't even have to do the figure eight you can just do the wrapping but I kind of like the look that it gives when you have it separated in the center like that so, so I just wrap around the right side of the tree and then wrap around the left side of the tree, coming back up in the center somewhere. And I keep doing this now until I get my trunk is, um, till I think it's long enough. So I think the trunk is long enough. And I have on um, this one, I put the, the stone beads. They're stone or glass, and they're just chips. They call them bead chips, I think is what they called them. Is what the name of them was, chips. And so they're all different shapes, and I like that, the different shapes. And, but they're all, like, smooth and stuff. So I don't know if they take, like, glass chips and then they run them in a one of those stone polishing machines and make them all nice and smooth, but they're perfect for this project. And when I um, ordered them, I looked for what they called the chakra colors. So, because the tree of life has the colors of the chakra in it. Well, my trunk here is looking a little cattywampus, but, you know, some trees just look cattywampus in real life. They don't follow directions either. They're kind of like me. They just do whatever. They don't follow directions. Okay, so now I think I'm going to let my... Um, let that go around one more. Right onto this other side, through, and then I'm going to come back up over here. Because now I'm going to start wrapping my branch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these 
two of these branches now. And I'm going to just wrap them branches. I'm just going to start wrapping around the... No, not around the... Around the hoop, Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, how, how did I do that two times? Okay. Down here, Elizabeth. Okay, now. So, and I'm going to be wrapping these two. And I'm going to go up part way with those two. And then that's going to be my branch. That's my branch, that part that I'm that I'm wrapping right now. And I'm just wrapping that. That's just wrapping. That's all that's doing. It's going around and around and around and pulling those two branch, those two together. Those two, because I made seven, I'm taking two of them and putting them together. Okay, that, now that's as far as I'll go with that, with wrapping. Now I'm going to wrap just this one. Okay, so then that's the limb. The limb comes off of the branch. And so, pieces there. And I'm going to just wrap that one all the way to the top. I'm just going to go this far with just this one branch and then then you're on your own then you are on your own and boy I hope you try this and like I'm just showing you a very basic something and just so you can kind of get an idea but then you do your own thing you know I think that you could use like the bangle bracelets anything round um, a bangle bracelet would be neat a lot of times I think you can get them pretty cheap, buying like cheaper by the dozen, you know, something like that. Okay, so then one more wrap should do this, and I've got it all the way up. Okay, so now that is wrapped all the way up there now. So it went from the trunk of the tree, then it went to the branch, and then it went to the limb. So now I want to do get the second limb. So I want to get the yarn over there, and to get the yarn over there to that one, I'm just going to go underneath. I'm just going to slide my needle underneath those stitches and let it come back out over here at that other limb that I want to start wrapping the other part of that limb okay see so now I'm going to be wrapping and I'm going to go down And I'm going to continue to go all the way down until I get to the fork in the branch there. The fork from the branch. It forks off into two limbs. The branch forks off into two limbs. And so I'm going to keep wrapping. And I'm, I pinch it, you know, I'm pinching the yarn to hold it where it belongs so it doesn't slide or come loose because it's not going through anything it's just wrapping over that branch over the yeah the branch the limb trunk branch limb okay Okay. 
one more little bit of a wrap on there, then that should be enough on that. And then I want to show you, okay, so now there I have the, tr the trunk and then the branch, and it's went off to two limbs. Well, this longer limb here, I want to get a twig to come out the side. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna run my needle up through the scent up through that wrapping to just up there another half an inch or so and pull that. Now if you wanted to stop it right there, you could stop it right there, and then your yarn is tucked in there and it wouldn't go anywhere. But now I can take this yarn that I just pulled through and I'll go back up through. And I'm going to go underneath the um, crocheted part. And back down. And I'm going to put that needle right under one of those. Well, I didn't get it under one of those yarn stitches. Wait a minute. Let me try harder. There we go. Now that's in there, which that brought it over and back. Okay, so then now I want to take, and I'm going to start wrapping the twig. And this is where I think if you had a larger hoop and made a larger tree, you could really make a lot of, of a lot more branches, twigs, Branches, limbs, and twigs. You could make a lot more because you'd have more space to do that. Okay, I gotta try and hold my, keep my fingers pinched on there so that my, um, I don't lose my, the tension on the, the yarn. And so I'm now just wrapping the twig. And keep wrapping it till I get all the way back up to the the frame, the um oops. You went to the wrong place, ma'am, Mr. Thread. Let's get that right. Let's get that right. Boy, today I feel just a little down. I don't know why. I just, hmm. Some days we just have those days, so I guess for no reason. Just because we are we who, just because we are who we are. And, um. I'm happy. I'm in my happy place. Okay, and so now I'm going to put that thread through there because I'm gonna now I'm going to take this thread off and go back down here and start again. But see what I did here is you know I could actually actually start up here and go down on the next one. But what you'll see here is I took two and put them together, two and put them together. Okay, now there's, I have an odd number, so I would probably take the center one, I wouldn't put it together with something. I would just start winding, wrapping that center one because there's an odd number. This one, I took two of these, one, two, and I wrapped them together until I got here, and then I made the fork by sep by taking them separate and just wrapping them. And then I wrapped this one all the way up separate. And then I went down here and I made a twig. See there? And like I say, well, I was almost thinking I would take that thread, because I got a lot of thread still on here. So what I think I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to go around here and then I'm going to start wrapping this one. Well, 
Well, you know what? It's just whatever, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. I'm going to start wrapping that one. Because you don't. And I guess as you're going down, you can start splitting off to different branches or twigs anywhere on the branch, anywhere on it. So see, now I have that one. You know what I think I'm going to do here? I know what I'll do. I'll get this down till I got it pretty close to the trunk. You know what? I should have saw if I could pull you down. Yeah, of course, when I'm almost done, did I think about that? Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to let me go around that one more time. And then, because this is two strands, this next one is two strands. One in the, well, they're all two strands. One in the front, one in the back. I'm going to just go and grab that double strand in the back. And I'm going to start wrapping those two together. This tree is in your garden, so you do whatever it seems like it looks like you should be doing. And then I'm wrapping this one. back up a little bit here and wrap it going back which that's going to make that branch a little bit chubbier and then see now I got that much done and then I want to do the rest of this piece. So for those of you who ask me if I'd show you how I do this, I don't think I'm helping much at all. I don't think I'm helping much at all. I think I'm just kind of Doing whatever I do. Do you know what I could even do? It's because I'm starting to get a little confused here now. It doesn't take much for that to happen either. Hmm. I think what I want to do is I'm going to start wrapping these two up here. You can actually come up with and then I get that much wrapped right to there. And then I can go straight up here and go under, and I'm making another twig. Well, holy moly. Now this is, this might turn out to look like a, what do they call them, banyan trees they have down South Florida. It's got a whole bunch of 
twigs and things all just wrapped around each other. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I've got this one in a mess. I've got this one in a royal mess. But I like my royal mess. I like it. And once I get the stones put on here too, then this is going to be amazingly beautiful. So I have got some mal malformed limbs and twigs on this tree. But just like my little, little bit down there, my little dog that's sleeping down there, she's got one bad leg. And it's all crippled. So she's got three good legs and one that's just there to look pretty. And then that's this tree here. It's kind of just a different kind of a tree. And so when you start wrapping your little branches up there, you just make twigs wherever you want them. Limbs and twigs, you just have them all. And just keep wrapping. Just keep wrapping. Now see, look at how my limb looks like an X. X marks the spot on that limb. Because it's special. It's a special tree. This is a special tree tree. And so, we will not make fun of this tree because it's special. It is just special. But it, what it looks like is it looks like there's a limb that goes up this way and around here and then this one crosses in front of it. And that's okay like that. It is just plumb, just fine. Then when I have to hide my threads, then I'm just going to go down through the trunk Pull it down here and cut it off there, and I have no ends looking. So I do have these three to do, and um, so I have these ones done, three done. Well, actually, I don't know how many. That was I started out with seven. I got one, two, three. Yeah, I don't know what I did, but anyhow. So your tree is going to look different. However, you start wrapping. See, I still have these ones to wrap, and I'll make twigs and whatever out of them. Let's see. That one, all I did was get the trunk done and one branch and limb. And I still have the rest of them to go. And then, did I have another one too? Oh yeah, this one. Oh yeah, like this one here, I did the trunk. And then I had one, two, three, four, five. I must have only had, well, I don't know. When I get to wrapping them, I don't know what I do. See how they just split off? This one went straight up. This one split off here. This one split off over here. So every one of them are different. They're all different. And then that's when, and, and you want them to be different, really. You want them to be different so they all have their own little personality because they're a tree of life, you know, and life is just different. So, see, I don't finish one. Well, I do have this one finished. And then this one is sort of, re this one's ready for beads. This one needs more wrapping, and this one needs more wrapping. But that's what I do. That's what I do when I should be being doing domestic activities or whatever. I just do stuff. And that's what I'm doing. And I save all my little threads here and put them in this little bag because that'll be stuffing. It'll be stuffing inside of something. And so, oh, I wanted to show you too. I think this one I did on my, oh yeah, I finished this one up on my live stream and then I took it off. And then this one I did this morning, this weaving. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. And so I did this weaving. Well, I was weaving this way. This fabric that I used was at one time two different bed sheets that I just ripped. 
into pieces. You might have seen, I actually even ripped this apart on a video, and it's been about like three years ago. And this, so it's been just packed away. Well, I used them to re weave this piece, but I kept ending up with these ends over here. So then I thought, well, this could be the bottom. This could be the bottom and, and um, I can make something out of this. And so then like I have yo-yos. I was, this is what I was thinking that I may do, is to make a bouquet of flowers out of yo-yos. Just a few yo-yos, because I got different colors and beautiful yo-yos. Some of these I made, some of them were sent to be my beautiful people. That's why they're all different. If I had only the ones I made, they'd all be the same and boring. But they're not. They're made by different, different people. And so they're just different. They're all beautiful. They're all beautiful. Different and beautiful. Now look. So if I take those yo-yos and make myself a bouquet out of these yo-yos, just a bouquet on here, make me some stems down here. I could shred these up even a little bit more down here. So it's more of a Just shred them up some more. I mean, I'm scrapping, Lizzie. I'm scrapping. I love scraps. Look at that. See, I can shred these down here even more. And I could even add more of a fringe down here. But I think this is exactly what I'll do right here. And then I will take a button and put a button into the center of each one of these yo-yos. I'll put a button. And I'll have it stems, and then maybe I'll do embroidery a little bit with sort of embroidery, but make stems on here. So this will be my woven fabric. I made my own fabric to put my own spirit stitching on. And this is going to be just beautiful. And then I can take this whole thing and put it on the front of a journal cover. Or I could make it to where it is a hanging. Or, but, on a, I think that would be really nice on a, on a journal cover. Now see, I don't have this as tight on this edge as I got it on this edge when I took it off the loom. And um, that's something I got to uh, watch more videos or something to see what I'm doing, what I can do differently to get them. Well, I can see right now that I could pull them tighter. I can pull these tighter than when I got them. Because this was the top. This was the top and this was the bottom. And then I just pulled these ones to get these ones tight. And I have I've more learning. I'm always in the learning process. And, um, yeah. That's what I'm doing. Okay, that's it. That's it. Now I'm going to let you go. Oh, but not before I read. And where's my book? Where's my book? Where's my book? Oh, there. There he goes, a book. Okay, prayers of peace. Gosh, do we need prayers of peace. Let's open it up to right here. Till I reach heaven's door. Glasses, please. Okay. I want to be like you, Lord. In all I do and say, I want to be like you, Lord, and serve you every day. I want to show compassion to all along life's way. I want to love you dearly. Oh, help me, Lord, I pray. I want to seek the lonely and those who are distraught. I want to share with others the many things you taught. I want to run life's race well. Be faithful to the end. I yearn to be like you, Lord, my Savior and my friend. And that I may be like you, thy mercy I implore, to keep me ever pure, Lord, till I reach heaven's door.
That was written by Louise Pinkerton Fritz. This is how I want to show compassion to all. I want to love you dearly. Mm -mm -mm. I want to seek the lonely and those who are distraught. I want to share with others. I love this. This is good. This is the way I feel inside. This is the way I feel inside. When I watch the Super Bowl, I always figure out who, who is the um, underdog. That's the one I want to win. I always root for the underdog. That's who I am. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. And I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. Make you a nice tree of life. Do some weaving. Make some yo-yo flowers. Put it on your weaving. My goodness, you can just keep coming up with new things to make. Keep you happy and keep you healthy and keep you safe and all them things. And I ask God to watch over you to keep you happy and healthy and humble and safe and secure and well-fed and all those good things. Like the chocolate cake and ice cream. Oh, no, we don't have any of that. Okay, God bless. Thank you so much for watching.